Hello, and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. Once a week, I pick some topic of interest in C++ and dig into it with some live coding. In this episode, I'm going to discuss two hidden gems that are in C++ Standard Library. And the first that I'm going to cover is Standard Next. Standard Next was introduced in C++ 11, and it simply returns the next forward iterator from the one that was passed to it. So let's say you have a vector of objects, and we want to create them a vector of integers. And we want to say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And for some reason, in our use case, we want to know if the first, if the if everything except for the first element is sorted. So we might use the standard is sorted algorithm. And we want to say if standard is sorted and we've got Something like this. Actually, let's change to here. All right, very straightforward. We just want to print out whether or not this vector is sorted. And yeah, I forgot my vector header. And I forgot the IO stream header. All right. And we get true. But for some reason in our data, we've, you know, we have some special value at the front. I don't know why we've already pre-sorted it, something like that. And now we run our algorithm and it tells us, no, these values are not sorted. What we really want to say is we want to see if everything except for the first element is sorted. So if you're anything like me, I've done stuff like this in the past, where I'm like front or begin equals standard begin v, and then increment begin, and you do something like this. and that works, or you've said, well, I know that I'm working with a random access iterator, so I'm going to do something like this instead, and generally that works. You can do iterator math, but just for the sake of argument, now what happens if we make this a list of integers? which I would strongly not recommend making it a list of integers, but you might have a reason to be able to work with a bunch of different types. And now this fails because iterators from lists are not random access iterators, so you cannot add an integer to them. So, oh noes, what do you do? Well, the answer is you want to use standard next which makes a copy of the iterator that you passed in and increments it the most efficient way possible to the next value. And we get exactly what we want. Now I actually have some places in my own code where I had implemented my own version of standard next because I didn't know it existed. So hopefully you'll find that helpful. And now the second thing that we want to look at is standard exchange. And this was added in C++14. And what we do is it replaces the value of object with the new value and returns the old value of the object. So you might find yourself in some sort of a loops kind of situation or something. It's, it's, it seems like the kind of thing that comes up where you know, you've got some loop going on
And for some reason, you want to be like, well, the last equals the current value, and the current value equals some new value, and then you carry on with your day. But standard exchange gives us this handy little thing where we can say, well, last equals standard exchange of i and new value. We can do it all in one line. And if we look at the implementation of standard exchange, or the possible implementation, it's doing moves and forwards, and it's attempting to make sure that no copies at all happen if possible, so the compiler can actually compile this to something really efficient. And I've found there's a place in ChiScript where I can use this. So if we look here in the ChiScript parser, I have this um, code here where I am saving the last column. So what this is, this uh, position object, it keeps track of where we currently are while the parsing of a ChiScript script. And we need to know what our current column or last column and our current line or last line was and that kind of thing to be able to print out intelligent errors to say that an error occurred from column 1 to column 15 or something like that. And so I've got this code that is ex basically tailor-made for a use case of exchange. So I can use this here and I can say, well, let's just do a standard exchange of column 1. And now granted for integers, this doesn't really save us a lot, but for things that are more expensive to copy, it actually could be a pretty um, helpful tool. So it might be something to look for a use cases, and plus it makes your code more readable and more understandable to people that are coming after you. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of C++ Weekly. I just thought I'd share a couple of little gems that I'd learned about recently, and thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and check out any of the links below.